Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. The 1st of August this year could be D-Day for landlords because the new housing loss prevention advice service comes into force and it has literally received hardly any publicity whatsoever. But in legal terms for landlords, this is a game changer. But what exactly does it mean? From the 1st of next month, basically just about all tenants who are facing eviction will not only be entitled to free advice as they are now, although that will be stepped up, but they will also be allowed, entitled to free legal representation. There is talk of it being means tested, perhaps, but nothing is in place at the moment that I'm aware of. So for all intents and purposes, just about all tenants will qualify and it's possibly a knee-jerk reaction from the government in light of the hundreds and thousands of Section 21s that have been issued over the last few months because of the actions of the government who have caused the problem. And rather than taking steps to evolve from where we are now to wherever they wish to take us to, wherever that may be, they have literally created a complete and utter crisis throughout the country. Also, for landlords, what this means is that if a tenant disputes <clears throat> their eviction, their Section 21, and keep in mind that there are many landlords who were unaware and be it intentionally or unintentionally, did not comply with the new rules following the Deregulation Act in September 2015, simply not giving the tenant a gas safety certificate, how to rent guide or EPC before they moved in the property disqualifies them from the right to use a Section 21. There are many tenants who have complied with a Section 21 order, unaware of this, but increasingly tenants are being advised and they are using this as an argument to have the Section 21 set aside. But keep in mind, even if you did present your tenant with this paperwork before they moved in, from a legal point of view, it, it, the tenant could deny that they received it and they would have a case. Uh, for it to be legally watertight, you would have to have evidence signed uh, signed uh, evidence with a witness for every single one of those documents. Even if you wrote those documents, itemized them uh, on a piece of paper and the tenant signed at the bottom, there has been there have been instances where a tenant has then basically made a statement to the effect that you know one of the, the last document was added afterwards and they hadn't received it. And quite often judges will uh accept that and set the 21 aside also because of the representation it means that more often than not any hearings will be pushed into a full day and beyond and legal fees upwards of fifteen thousand pounds are not uncommon according to industry sources and the landlord will have to pay win or lose the tenant win or lose will not have to pay anything this is absolutely catastrophic. Um, you all know my opinion about uh, the renovation of small properties and capital gains tax. This was the worst time to actually all but eliminate capital gains tax allowance when there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of buy-to-let landlords throughout the country exiting the market. The government could have encourage them with tax incentives to divert their efforts at possibly renovating the hundreds of thousands of vacant, empty, derelict properties throughout the country and bring them back into use. If it were down to me, I would have not reduced the capital gains tax allowance on smaller properties, on lower value properties, perhaps below two or three or four hundred thousand pounds. I would have doubled it and I would have also offered an incentive for the 
uh, refund of the 3% stamp duty surcharge, perhaps subject to certain conditions that the property was vacant for perhaps six months or a year before it was taken on for renovation, that the property is brought up to a certain standard, that the EPC rating is brought up to a certain standard, then the government would be encouraging landlords to invest their money into a constructive uh, process that would bring more properties into use because the big developers are not interested in renovating the two up two downs hundreds of thousands of them because it is not lucrative especially now but there are many individuals up and down the country who would love to impart embark on a small project renovating a property and why shouldn't they make a profit while they are doing so and making a property that was formerly derelict available for a family or a tenant to be able to use as their home in the future but who am i to argue with the uh, greater minds of uh, those upstairs i'd love to hear your thoughts on this because this is a serious step forward i'll post the link to the government site where you can read all about it either in the description or in the comments i strongly urge you to read through it if you have issued a section 21 you're about to issue a section 21 there is any prospect of you embarking um, on uh, in the courts in the next few weeks or months i cannot stress enough how important it is that you get professional advice from a solicitor who specializes in property at this point because no disrespect to other solicitors but one small detail which i know because i've been there could make the difference between you being granted your property back or you facing months or years of uh, litigation that will cost you an absolute fortune so Please do not take this lightly and do not leave, do not assume anything. Establish the facts for yourselves. I hope this helps. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.